Welcome, folks, to the final episode of Season 4.1, that being the, uh, the light bracket of lightweight class of Battle Mechs here in our dual mech series um, that we've started since February of this year, of 2024, of Battletech Simplified. I'm Michael Shockman, I'll be your host and commentator, and in today's episode we will be finishing off this weight class by going over two of what I have been requested, mechs I didn't know about very much, uh, and there's not a lot of information on them, but I'm going to give you my best my best rundown on them and give you my best opinions uh, and whatnot, um, and we'll get right into it. Those being the Blade and the Falcon Hawk. So before, so as we get into this, go ahead and grab a beverage, turn off the lights, and enjoy the show. Here we go. The Blade is a lightweight scouting and raiding mech that employs its fearsome speed to, t to strike at larger mechs, then to escape before their opponents can track them. Well suited for pack hunter and swarming tactics, the Blade works well with, an, with other fast mechs, other fast units such as Classic Locust and the Clan Dasher. Originally commissioned by the Republic of the Sphere, uh, the Republic of the Sphere's first commanding general, Victor Steiner Davian, uh, the Blade was hit, uh, was, uh, the Blade was his attempt to standardize and simplify the homo the hodgepodge military hardware as Stone's Coalition became the Republic Armed Forces. The Blade was manufactured in the, from the mid 3080s until around 3096, becoming the signature one of the, becoming the signature mechs for uh, Principal Principes Guards, Hastati Ast Sentinels, and elite knights of the of the of the Spheres regiments. Regiments. As for its weapons and armor, weapons and equipment. An excellent close quarters mech, the blade is built around a mirror, mirror, a Mydron Tornado Rotary Autocannon 5, supplied by three tons of reloads in its primary, as its primary weapon, supported also by a pair of diverse optics ER medium lasers. All three weapons are located in the mech's right arm, and while critics pointed out the risk of locating all the mech's weapons in a single location, the decision was based on the manufacturer's attempt to achieve an omni-mech level of ease of maintenance on a standard battle mech. Save for the shoulder actuator, ammo, and energy feeds, the, arm, the, the entire arm is a self-contained system, allowing, con allowing technicians to quickly and easily detach and replace it replace a damaged arm with an undamaged replacement with relative ease. Next, moving on to the Falcon Hawk. Uh, the Falcon Hawk has what is probably the longest development time of any mech in history. Originally engineered and designed in 2794, the rapid loss of technology during the Succession Wars delayed its production until 3057. And even then, only thanks to the recovery of a Star League memory core on Helm by the Grey Death Legion. The Falcon Hawk is powered by an Omni 175XL engine that provides a top speed of 86. That's 86. Yeah, 86.4 kph. Making it relatively slow for its weight class. This is done so that the Falcon Hawk could carry the weapons needed for its role as a long-range sniper. The mech also the mech carries seven tons of armor to protect it from return fire. And while this is not a very this is not very thick armor or a very thick hide, the Falcon Hawk can take advantage of cover and wooded terrain to make itself extremely hard to target and to hit at range while using its long-range weapons. Uh, or its long-range weapon to strike its targets on the battlefield. Speaking of those weapons, as for its weapons and equipment, the Falcon, Har Falcon Hawk is armed with a fusion long-tooth ERPPC as its primary weapon, which allows, um, which allows in it to engage targets at up to 690 meters. 
For close range combat, the com the mech carries two Tronel XL uh, um, medium pulse lasers and a diverse optics small pulse laser. And the event that an enemy is able, in the event that an enemy is able to circle into its rear arc, the Falcon Hawk is prepared with a Martell medium laser to defend its rear armor. As for my personal feelings on both of these mechs, ladies and gentlemen, I would have to say that they're both, they both sound very much like takes on the same basic thing, whereas the Falcon Hawk is more of a sniper, um, and the Blade is far more of a kind of a medium to frontline trooper who is better at harassing tactics and uh, team, team like pack tactics and harassing and doing all that stuff. The use of, an, of a rotary audio cannon is immensely good. Although three tons of ammo, I'm not sure that that's enough to really stand much of a fight, but who knows. Um, whereas the Falcon Hawk sounds like it would be an amazing sniper mech. Like, for, and for very... Well, it can't really run around very fast. If you can put it up in, like, on a hill and some trees and, like, put it, put it as raining over the battlefield, it could fucking take out targets in no time with no end. Um, like, th they're both really great mechs. Um, if I had to rate I, both of them, I'd have to give them an, each of them in their own way definitely a, probably a 3.75 out of 5 for their own respective roles. Um, the blade being that of a, a close range, fast, harassing mech, and the Falcon Hawk being a uh, heavily armored, not so fast, but extremely skilled uh, sniper mech. Um, definitely good marks in that for all of them. So. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to about finish up today's episode and finish up this light uh, weight bracket section of this series, of this season. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the last couple of months worth of things. It's been, it's definitely been a lot less daunting and a lot more easy for me to make these episodes. There's fewer episodes for me to have to put together, for me to have to edit, which gives me more time to make other content for you guys on the other channels and on my other platforms. Um, but I also... I'm hoping at the time of this recording that when you guys see it, you will not be too disappointed as to the change in uh, upload schedule, as um, I hope I will have given you ample enough time to do so, uh, to get used to it. Um, I've seen a lot of other uh, channels doing something, doing similar stuff these days, and with only a few, really a few genre or not genre but a few in, uh, franchises that i know enough about to really feel like i'm an expert or have enough knowledge about to really offer anything um of worth uh it kind of makes my options a little bit limited but not so much as to make it unenjoyable it just means i have to be a little bit more creative with how how i make videos and when i upload them so Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss an episode. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the outro. If you, just, if you want to find out how to best support my work, you can find out by doing that and finding out that information therein. You can also check out the links down in the description to find that information out as well. Yeah, folks, I'm Michael Shockman. I've been your host and commentator. Stay tuned for the month of June when we dive into the 40-ton weight bracket of the medium weight class. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to be making that series for a couple of months because I have other things I need to do. And most importantly, at this very moment that this is being recorded and finished up, I need to work on uh, resting my voice because I'm still dealing with being a little bit sick. Um, but hope you guys understand. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Shockman. I've been your host and commentator. And until next time, bye bye. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you never miss an episode. Secondly, if stream bucks are plentiful, please consider supporting the channel either by subscribing on Twitch, pledging on Patreon, or by grabbing some merch over at the Shock Shop. The links to all of these will be in the, in the About section and in the description down below. Again, thank you to all of our supporters for all of the likes, shares, and views. I really appreciate it. And without all of you, our work here would not be possible. I'm Michael Shockman, folks. I've been your host and commentator. And remember, keep it real, keep it safe, keep it healthy. And we will see you guys all again soon in the next one. Peace off, everybody.